Al-Kawthari, Imam Al-Kawthari, I grabbed his commentary on a book called as saqil a book by Taqiyuddin As-Subki. In this book, Taqiyuddin As-Subki, he's the refuter of Ibn Taymiyyah, among others who lived at his time. He refutes a poem that was written by Ibn Taymiyyah's apprentice, Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziyyah. Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziyyah has this long poem. I don't know how many lines it is. It's famous as an because every line ends with the letter Noon. And it's full of tashbih, likening Allah to the creation, blasphemy, explicit blasphemy. And the scholar said it appears that during the life of Ibn al-Qayyim, he kept this poem secret and he read it to his like-minded people who are believing like him. And it is mentioned that Al-Dhahabi read that poem on Ibn al-Qayyim before Ibn al-Qayyim died. And so it is said that later on this poem became famous among the Mushabbiha. Taqiyuddin As-Subki, he got his hands on this poem and he refuted it in a book called As-Sayf al which means the smooth sword. Imam al-Kawthari, who's one of the last scholars of the Ottoman Empire, he was a Turkish scholar, he has commentary on this book. And so, among his commentary, is some things that he said about the hadith of the female slave. So Imam al-Kawthari, he said, may Allah have mercy on him. وَرَاوِي هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ عَنْ ابْنِ الْحَكَمْ هُوَ عَطَاءُ بْنُ يَسَارُ أو يسار. He said, the narrator of this hadith from Ibn al-Hakam is Ata. Ibn Yasar or Yasar. I'm not sure if there's a shadda on the scene in his name. Whether it's Yasar or Yasar. Allahu Alam. Waqad ikhtalafat al fawzuhu fih. And his expressions have varied in this hadith. That narrator. Fafi lafzin lahu. So according to one expression of his, فَمَدَّ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَدَهُ إِلَيْهَا وَأَشَارَ إِلَيْهَا مُسْتَفْهِمًا مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ الحديث. According to an expression of his, the wording of the hadith says, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam extended his hand towards her and he signaled to her asking her Man fi sama that apparently means who is in the sky Al Hadith etc until the end of the hadith Fatakun al Muhadafatu Bil Ishara According to this, the conversation was in sign language. عَلَىٰ أَنَّ اللَّفْظَ يَكُونُ ضَائِعًا مَعَ الْخَرْسَاءِ الصَّمَّاءِ Since verbal expression is futile with a woman who is mute, and deaf. So you should know that some versions of the hadith of the slave girl describe her as a black slave girl. Let that not get anyone all riled up. So this hadith is sometimes called 
Hadith al Sauda, the Hadith of the Black Slave Girl or Black Slave Woman. And it is mentioned in some versions that she is Kharsa, that means mute, she cannot speak. And also being black, that means she's not Arab, so she's a foreigner. Some of the scholars said, she was not fluent in Arabic. And al kawthari is saying here that according to this, she was mute and deaf. He said, عَلَىٰ أَنَّ اللَّفْظَ يَكُونُ ضَائِعًا مَعَ الْخَرْسَاءِ With that, verbal expression is futile with a woman who is mute and deaf. فَيَكُونُ الْلَفْظُ الَّذِي أَشَارَ إِلَيْهِ النَّاظِمُ وَالْمُؤَلِّفُ لَفْظَ أَحَدِ الرُّوَاتِ عَلَىٰ حَسَبِ فَهْمِهِ لَا لَفْظَ الرَّسُولِ صلى الله عليه وسلم so the expression to which the poet signaled, that's Ibn al-Qayyim al jawziya the expression to which he signaled, and also that same expression to which the author signaled, the author of as al-Saqil, that's Taqiyuddin al-Subki, the expression to which the poet, the composer, and the author signaled to would then be the expression of one of the narrators according to his understanding, not the expression of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمِثْلُ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ يَصِحُّ الْأَخْذُ بِهِ فيما يتعلق بالعمل دون الاعتقاد and the likes of this hadith it is valid to take by it meaning to apply it concerning what is related to practice not conviction meaning this hadith you can use it for rules pertaining to freeing slaves for example or pertaining to other practical matters, not matters related to the belief. وَلِذَا أَخْرَجَهُ مُسْلِمٌ فِي بَابِ تَحْرِيمِ الْكَلَامِ فِي الصَّلَاةِ And for that reason, Muslim, Imam Muslim, he produced this hadith in the chapter about the prohibition of talking in the prayer. Duna kitab il iman, not in the book, not in the chapter of belief. Haythu shtamala ala tashmiti al aatisi fi salah, wa man in nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an thalik. Where this hadith includes what is said for the one who sneezes the one who sneezes in the prayer. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forbidding that. So you know if a person sneezes, he says, Alhamdulillah. And then you say, Yarhamukallah. So all this talk should not be done in the prayer if someone sneezes. If you're reciting Al-Fatiha and then you sneeze, just continue your Fatiha. But if you say, Alhamdulillah, in the spot of your Fatiha, you will have interrupted your Fatiha and you need to start your Fatiha from the beginning. And if you say, Yarhamukallah to a person while you're praying, then you invalidated your prayer altogether according to the rules of talking in the prayer. وَلَمْ يُخْرِجْهُ الْبُخَارِيُّ فِي صَحِيحِهِ And Al-Bukhari did not produce this hadith in his sahih wa akhraja fi juz'i khalqil af'al 
ما يتعلق بتشميت العاطس من هذا الحديث مقتصرا عليه دون ما يتعلق بكون الله في السماء البخاري did not produce this hadith in his sahih and he did produce it in his volume about the creation of the deeds meaning al-bukhari has a booklet it's a whole different hadith book different from sahih al-bukhari it's called khalq af'al al-ibad the creation of the deeds of the slaves Imam Al-Kawthari says, Al-Bukhari, he did not produce the hadith of the slave girl in his book of Sahih. But he did produce it in his volume called Khalq Al-Af'al, the creation of the deeds. And what he produced in that book is only what's related to the sneezing person of this hadith. And he limited what he documented to that much of the hadith. And he did not mention what is related to what appears to say that Allah is in the sky. Biduni ayi isharatin ila annahu khtasar al hadith. Without any signal to that he shortened the hadith. Al Bukhari documented that part of the hadith with no signal to the other part of the hadith. That's to give you an indication of Al-Bukhari's treatment of the hadith. He didn't produce it in his sahih, and what he did produce of it, he didn't produce the part about Allahu fi samaa Wa laysa fi riwayati al-laythiyyi an malikin lafzu fa innaha mu'minah. And it is not in the version of al-laythi, According to Malik, meaning Imam Malik in his book Al Muwatta, he documented this hadith from the route of Al Layfi. There is not in that version, Fa innaha mu'minah. She is a believer. Because remember, in Imam Muslim's version of the hadith, he said, A'atiqha fa innaha mu'minah. Free her, for she is a believer. In Imam Malik's version of the hadith, it only says, A'atiqha, free her. It doesn't mention, Fa'innaha mu'minah, she is a believer. وَأَمَّا عَدَمُ صِحَّةِ الْإِحْتِجَاجِ بِهِ فِي إِثْبَاتِ الْمَكَانِ لَهُ تَعَالَى And as for the lack of the validity of using it as evidence, this hadith, in confirming the place for Allah Ta'ala فَلِلْبَرَاهِينِ الْقَائِمَةِ فِي تَنَزُّهِ اللَّهِ سُبَحَانَهُ عَنِ الْمَكَانِ وَالْمَكَانِيَّاتِ وَالزَّمَانِ وَالزَّمَانِيَّاتِ that is due to the evidences that stand in clearing Allah, the glorified, from the place and from all spatial things or spatial meanings and from time and all Temporal meanings, that means related to time. Qala Allah Ta'ala, Allah the Exalted says, قُلْ لِمَنْ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ قُلْ لِلَّهِ Suratul Al-An'am, verse 12, which means, Say, O Muhammad, to whom belongs what is in heavens and earth say it belongs to Allah وهذا مشعر بأن المكان وكل ما فيه ملك لله تعالى and this gives the impression that the place and everything in it 
and all that is in it is a possession of Allah Ta'ala. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى And Allah the Exalted said, وَلَهُ مَا سَكَنَ فِي اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ And to him belongs what settles in the night and the day. وَذَلِكَ يَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ الزَّمَانَ وَكُلَّ مَا فِيهِ مِلْكُ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى and that proves that time and all of what is in it is a possession of Allah Ta'ala. فَهَاتَانِ الْآيَتَانِ تَدُلَّانِ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ الْمَكَانَ وَالْمَكَانِيَّاتِ وَالزَّمَانَ وَالزَّمَانِيَّاتِ كُلَّهَا مِلْكُ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى And so these two verses... Both prove that the place and the spatial things and the time and the temporal things, all of them are a possession of Allah Ta'ala. وَذَلِكَ يَدُلُّ عَلَى تَنْزِيهِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ عَنِ الْمَكَانِ وَالزَّمَانِ And that proves His exaltation, may He be glorified from the place and the time. Kama fi asasi taqudisi lil fakhri razi. Just like what's in the book called Asasu Taqudis by Al Fakhru Razi. This book, Asasu Taqudis, it's not very big. I have a copy here. Um, it goes through different mutashabi texts and clarifies their meanings. However, some of the concepts may be high, not easy to grasp for a beginner. وَلِأَنَّ الْحَدِيثَ فِيهِ اضْطِرَابٌ سَنَدًا وَمَتْنَا And because the hadith has inconsistency in the chain and in the text. رَغْمَ تَصْحِيحِ الذَّهَبِ Despite a Zahabi authenticating this hadith, a Zahabi, this one is problematic. A Zahabi, he is knowledgeable in the field of hadith and he is knowledgeable about the biographies of the men, of the, like the scholars and the narrators of the hadiths. But he is a mushabbi, as proven by. Such things as his book called Kitab al the Book of Highness, if you looked in there, you probably would close it right back and say, oof. So he says, this hadith also, it cannot be used for belief because it has inconsistency. Ittirab, ittirab means clashing, collision in the chain and in the text despite a dhahabi's authentication of the hadith. Wa tahwilihi, and despite his fear-mongering, his tahwil. Now, I didn't see a dhahabi's commentary on this hadith so that I know exactly what al-kawthari means by tahwiluhu. Tahwil, not tahwil, tahwil. From the word hawl. Hawl means like a horror or a fright, something Scary. So tahwil is like to make something scary. I don't, I don't know what did he say. Inshallah, maybe sometime we'll find out. Al Kawthari says, Rajir turukahu fi kitabi al ului li dhahabi. Review the pathways, the chains of this hadith in the book of Al Ulu, the book of highness. By a Zahabi, al muwatta, and check out, review the chains of narration for this hadith in the explanations of al muwatta by Imam Malik, wa wa Tawheed ibn Khuzaimah, and in the book of at Tawheed by Ibn Khuzaimah. Hatta ta'lama mablagh al-tirabi fihi. 
Sanadam Wametna. He says, Review those sources so that you would know the extent of inconsistency in this hadith, in the text, and in the chain. وَحَمْلُ ذَلِكَ عَلَى تَعَدُّدِ الْقِصَّةِ لَا يَرُضَاهُ أَهْلُ الْغَوْصِ فِي الْحَدِيثِ وَالنَّظَرِ مَعًا فِي مِثْلِ هَذَا الْمَطْلَبِ He says, taking that, that inconsistency to be in reference to multiple stories is not acceptable to the people who are engrossed in the science of hadith and investigation in this particular area or in this particular subject. فَالْرِوَايَاتُ عَلَىٰ رَجُولٍ مُبَهَمٍ مَحْمُولَةٌ عَلَىٰ بْنِ الْحَكَمِ So, the narrations that came from some unnamed person, some ambiguous man who's not named in the chain, those are taken to be in reference to Ibn al-Hakam. So it's not many different stories. وَلَمْ يَسُحَ حَدِيثُ كَعْبِ بْنِ مَالِكِ and as for the hadith of Ka'b ibn Malik, that one's not valid. It's not authentic. So it's not a different story. Yani it's not, it doesn't count. Wala hadithun yurwa an imra'ah. Nor a hadith that is narrated from a woman. That the story was that a woman came to the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Instead of a man coming and asking about that. So he's saying, and this one also is not even authentic, so it doesn't count. So it's not multiple stories. فَمَالِكٌ يَرْوِيهِ عَنْ عُمَرَ بْنِ الْحَكَمْ غَيْرَ مُقِرٍ بِأَنْ يَكُونَ غَلَطًا فِيهِ or غَلِطَ فِيهِ he says, Malik narrates that from the route of Umar ibn al-Hakam without submitting to that being a mistake, without submitting to this name of the narrator being a mistake. وَمُسْلِمٌ عَنْ مُعَاوِيَةَ ibn al-Hakam And Muslim narrates it from Mu'awiyah ibn al-Hakam so we have one Umar ibn al-Hakam, we have one Mu'awiyah ibn al-Hakam. وَلَفْظُهُمَا كَمَا سَبَقَتِ الْإِشَارَةُ إِلَيْهِ And the expression of those two hadiths, or those two versions, is like what has already been signaled to. مَعَ نَقْصِ لَفْظِ فَإِنَّهَا مُؤْمِنَةِ فِي رِوَايَةِ مَالِكِ With the lack of the expression for she is a believer in the narration of Malik. وَلَفْظُبْنِ شِهَابٍ فِي مُوَطَّئِ مَالِكٍ عَنْ أَنْصَارِي And the expression of Ibn Shihab in the Muwatta of Malik from the route of someone from the Ansar and he is the person in the story according to the first narration is فَقَالَ لَهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Said to her Atashhadina an la ilaha illallah Do you testify that no one is God Except Allah Qalat na'am She said yes Qala atashhadina anna muhammad Rasulullah He said do you testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah Qalat na'am She said yes Al-Kawthari says, وَأَيْنَ هَذَا مِنْ ذَاكِ And where is this narration from that narration? How close are those? Do you testify that no one is God but Allah versus where is Allah in the sky? Al-Kawthari goes on to say, 
وستعرف حال الذهبي في أواخر الكتاب and you will know what's the situation of al-Dhahabi towards the end of the book. Remember, this is commentary on someone else's book. فَلَا تَلْتَفِتْ إِلَىٰ تَهْوِيلِهِ وَتَحْرِيفِهِ فِي هَذَا الْبَابِ So do not give any consideration to his fear-mongering and his perversion in this subject or this hadith. فَلَعَلَّ لَفْضَ أَيْنَ اللَّهِ تَغْيِيرُ بَعْضِ الرُّوَاتِ عَلَىٰ حَسَبِ فَهْمِهِ For perhaps the expression أَيْنَ Allah, which appears to mean where is Allah, is the changing of some of the narrators according to his understanding. His conveying it not the way he took it, rather conveying it the way he understood it. والرواية بالمعنى شائعة في الطبقات كلها and narrating the hadith by meaning is widespread in all levels of narrators meaning from the companions, from the followers of the companions and the followers of the followers narrating by meaning is common so for him to narrate by meaning is not strange but the problem is when they narrate according to their understanding of the meaning and they don't understand actually the meaning. There are some examples of things like that, but not here and not now. وَإِذَا وَقَعَتِ الرِّوَايَةُ بِالْمَعْنَى مِنْ غَيْرِ فَقِيهٍ فَهُنَاكَ And when the narration by meaning comes from someone who is not a scholar, then there is where the devastation is. And the person in this story was not one of the scholars of the companions. And he doesn't even have another hadith coming from him. In fact, he was a Bedouin from the outskirts who was talking in the prayer. That's to show you that he was not a scholar, even if he was a companion. We're going all the way back to the person in the story of the Hadith. He himself, in the story of the Hadith, was someone talking in the prayer so he wasn't someone knowledgeable. عَلَىٰ أَنَّ أَيْنَ تَكُونُ لِلسُّؤَالِ عَنِ الْمَكَانِ And that's along with the fact that أَيْنَ would be for a question about the place وَلِلسُّؤَالِ عَنِ الْمَكَانَ And for a question about the status حَقِيقَةً فِي الْأَوَّلِ وَمَجَازًا فِي الثَّانِي it would be literal in the first case, asking about the place, and figurative in the second case, asking about the status. Oh, حَقِيقَةً فِيهِمَا Or, it literally asks about both of them, the place and the status, and it's not a figure of speech. Wallahu a'lam.